What's up, guys and gals? Matthew Doyle from Scaleform back again. I hope everyone's doing great and figuring out how to do some really cool stuff with GFX and UDK. I can't wait to see what you're all putting together out there. As promised on the UDK forums, this is the first of several tutorials covering the ins and outs of the UDK HUD. Rather than build a HUD from scratch, I'm going to explain how we put the HUD together, file by file, asset by asset, and script by script. So let's jump right in. The first video is an overview of how the HUD is put together. The next video will cover core functions of the UT GFX HUD wrapper class, including going into detail on how the pause menu works. After that, we'll talk about the core functionality of GFX Minimap HUD, which contains the HUD logic. And in a final video, we'll discuss the Minimap. Here's what the finished HUD product looks like. Everyone's familiar with this HUD by now. You've got health and ammo, Minimap, game messages, and so on. There's also a scoreboard, a pause menu, and the now famous 3D inventory system. So let's talk for a minute about how the HUD is put together overall. First we have the flash assets where the actual graphics live. For instance, ut3 underscore HUD dot FLA, ut3 underscore minimap dot FLA, and ut3 underscore scoreboard dot FLA. The source files should all live in the UDK game slash flash slash UDK HUD directory, assuming you have the latest QA build or have downloaded them yourself from UDN. The files contain the movie clips of bars and bullets and text fields and everything else that will be updated by the Unreal script files. For the sake of time, let's just briefly look at UT3 underscore HUD. Now, there is some action script in here, but most of it is devoted to adjusting the UI elements when the screen resolution is changed. Take note of this, though, as you may wish to do something similar on your HUD. Let's take a look at the ammo element. These elements are on the player stats layer and they all live inside the movie clip player stats. Let's go inside that movie clip and have a peek. Now first we have the weapon movie clip. Inside that movie clip we see we have a keyframe for each weapon graphic from UDK. Back out of the weapon movie clip let's look at the next important item the ammo in dynamic text field. Now you'll see that it has its font family set to normal font but all that's necessary to know is that this is a dynamic or changeable text field with the instance name of ammo in. Above this text field is the graphic ammo bar, which has an instance name of ammo. Going into this movie clip, we see a series of keyframes. Each keyframe represents a specific amount of ammo in the gun. Health is handled in a slightly different way. There is still a dynamic text field for the health text indicator called health in, but the health bar graphic is simply a movie clip called health, which contains a solid green bar. Instead of animating this bar on the timeline, we change its scale and color in code. I recommend you go through all the various movie clips and see how they're all put together. We'll cover more of the flash elements in another tutorial. For now, let's move on. Next we have the Unreal script files. First, we have GFX Minimap HUD.UC, found in the UT game class directory. This is where a lot of the magic happens. This class contains all the logic for updating the HUD, with the exception of the minimap during gameplay. This also happens to be the actual extended GFX movie player that is playing the UDK HUD Swift file. We'll be going over this file in depth in another tutorial. Next is GFX minimap.uc, also found in the UT game class directory. This class, as you would probably guess, contains the logic for updating the minimap during gameplay. We'll talk more about the minimap exclusively in yet another tutorial. UTGFXHUDWrapper.uc extends UTHUDBASE, which is the base class for any UTHUD tree. It extends UTHUDBASE because the function ClientSetHUD, which is found in PlayerController.uc on line 1165, requires an object that extends HUD and not GFX Movie Player. Incidentally, UT HUD base is found in the UT game classes directory and player controller is found in the engine classes directory. Now every HUD based movie, HUD, pause, inventory, etc. are managed by this wrapper class. They are instantiated, ticked, closed, and unloaded from memory by UT GFX HUD wrapper. There's also UT GFX team HUD wrapper.uc and this is used for team games. 
So this pretty much covers the core files used. However, there are a few more important functions that get called in other classes that we should take note of. So first is the function generic player initialization in utgame.uc, found in the utgame classes directory. You'll find the function on line 818 in the September QA build. Having a brief look, we can see that this function tells us what HUD to use when the game starts. Assuming b use classic HUD equals false, it tells UDK to use UT GFX HUD wrapper, or Team HUD wrapper if we're running a team-based game. This function is called from GameInfo.uc, which is the great-grandparent of UT Game, and it's fired off when a post-login event occurs. You'll find that call on line 1717 of GameInfo.uc. And GameInfo itself is found in the Engine Classes directory. Okay, so to sum up, the graphical elements are all in the flash files, but very little action script is found there. The graphical elements are all updated by gfxminimaphud.uc. Now gfxminimaphud is instantiated as a HUD and ticked or updated by the HUD wrapper, utgfxhudwrapper.uc, and the other movies, pause, inventory, etc., are also instantiated, opened, and closed by utgfxhudwrapper. The HUD wrapper is set as the HUD to use by game info calling on the function generic player initialization in UT game. We'll pick up with the line by line explanation of the HUD wrapper class in the next tutorial. As always, and until then, thanks for watching. I'm Matthew Doyle for Scaleform, signing off.